Hello everybody, my name is Alex from Alex Aquariums and today we will be looking at how you can get started at home with making Infusoria without any sort of starter culture. It's really simple and I'll walk you through all of the steps so you can end up with what we have right here next to me. I'm nothing more than a, a guy with a hobby for aquariums and I enjoy seeing fish grow up and breeding fish which is why I do this. I have a very basic setup behind me which hopefully with time will grow but for now I am just breeding whatever I have in my aquarium already which I moved down to my little tank here down below whenever some of them have bred anything. Now once you breed start breeding fish one important thing is to always have food for them. The most easy accessible food will for my personal needs be infusoria which we have right here and one of these starter cultures are actually very exciting because there is a lot of stuff going on down in this water right near here i'll tell you that much right now i'm staring at infusoria but i'm also staring at microworms and something that looks like i want to say water fleas but i'm not even sure but, but there is something skipping around on the water surface here that is way too big to be infusoria and it's definitely not a micro worm. So how did I get to here? Well, we're going to cover that in just a second. The reason that Infusoria is so good is because Infusoria is very small in size. So even the smallest of small fry, something like beta fish, or if you're breeding any sorts of epistogrammas or any sort of micros, <laughs> dwarf cichlids, if you're breeding German golden blue rams, angel fish, there are way too many species to name all of them right here, right now that you guys can use this for if you are breeding them. For my my personal need over here, I right now have a pair of blue rams running around and they've been breeding quite frequently. So I started these calls just to be sure that I have food when their fry start developing. And actually right now down there, there is fry developing. So if you want to see more about that, leave a comment down below and I'll try to cover that in a future video. Now with Infusoria, it's super simple to get started. All you really need and all what we have done here is a tub of water. This has to be aquarium water. Why that is, I'll get into in just a second. But for these two, we have one with banana peel and we have one with lettuce. Now, besides those, I've also heard people, oh God, no, that stinks. And this one stinks. I'll tell you why this stinks in just a minute as well. There's a lot of things we have to cover in just a minute. <laughs> but this one is banana peel. This one is lettuce. And you can use, I've heard people use milk with great success as well. And I've heard people use hay with great success. You can use wheat berries as well. Anything really that will start a natural bacteria growth or make bacteria explosion down in your water will also be great food for your infusoria as soon as they start growing. So the basic setup is really, really simple. Now I said you need aquarium water. There is a reason for this. During my time researching how I could do this most efficiently, I've seen a lot of people claim that you can use tap water. Now tap water can still be a success because sometimes the infusoria just kind of thrives in the lettuce itself and it starts booming from there. But the main reason that a lot of people use aquarium water is actually because there is already in your aquarium a bunch of tiny, tiny living creatures in there. Especially if you go harvest some, if you run a sponge filter or if you run a bucket filter where you can drain some of that water from the inside, that thing is just full of millions of critters already. And if you get those in your starter culture, well, then you pretty much are already 90% done and you just have to wait for them to explode, which is also why I, what I have done here. I have done little to nothing to this over the course of almost two weeks. And this one is booming with life, as I told you before. I wish I could show you just how much life there is in. I'll try to get a good picture of it at the end of this video, but I don't know how much I can show you, but I guarantee you there is a lot going on down here. Now, once you've taken your water, all you really have to do is just take your lettuce. If the lettuce is fresh, I recommend boiling it for just eight to 10 minutes, just to make sure that it softens up a bit and has an easier time degrading. For the banana peel, we used a banana peel that had just been lying for a couple of days. I figured this was the best approach. It wasn't really because this one didn't really develop any infusoria. It's kind of skipped that phase and just came full of bacteria. The result has been that this one is super smelly. I have no idea if a fresh banana peel would have been better or if I should have tried to boil that one as well, but this one simply did not work, whereas this one works. And I think you can quite clearly see that if I just lift this up, this one, you can actually see my fingers behind it. It's, um, it's, it's rather clear. I just fed them some milk, which I will tell you why soon as well. I did that and this one, Nah, that one is super murky and the water, I'll tell you, it's not a pleasant smell coming from this. You're not, you're not in any doubt when this actually goes bad. <laughs> 
I am just gonna put the lid back on these because this one also has a little bit of a bacteria growth again since I just put some milk in there to feed them. But as I just said, this has been a very, very nice culture and hopefully it keeps on going. And we're also gonna talk about how I keep this culture alive from now on. But first I want to just take one step back and show you guys how I created these step by step. So I have a little bit of video material for you here and I'll drop some comments on what I've done and what you should do when you start your own culture. Making your infusoria culture is super easy. Here I filled two tubs with aquarium water. If you do not have any aquarium water ready and available, then you can just go for a demineralized water as well. In these two tubs, I'm firstly cutting up some old lettuce I've had in my fridge, which no longer looks good. If the lettuce is fresh, all you just have to do is boil it for five to 10 minutes and you are good to go. If you do not have lettuce, but you have any other sorts of greens like either kale or spinach, just go ahead and use that because the result will be the same, even though I will say that spinach can get terribly bad with the smell while the culture is sort of growing. In the other top that I made, I added an old banana peel. I left it out for a couple days after eating the banana as I thought this would be beneficial for the bacteria breaking down the peel. And this is all you have to do. Now, the banana peel thingy didn't go too well, so I do not know if I recommend leaving it out and I don't know if I just messed it up by doing so, but... That is at least what I've done here. So maybe some future testing has to be tried with a fresh banana peel. But once these are all set up, you can add either yeast or milk. Yeast is great food for infusoria and so is milk. Leave both tubs in a sunny area, which could be next to a window and you are actually good to go. That's all you have to do. Once you've set them up, you will have to give them a daily stir to move oxygen and CO2, bacteria and infusoria around the water. This helps the infusoria grow and it helps to replenish the oxygen levels inside of the tub. So at this point in time, the tops are now five days old and you can see the water has gone quite cloudy already. This happens anywhere from one to five days after setting them up and it is normal as the bacteria will be growing inside of the top. And this is basically what the infusoria will be eating and growing on. So you want that bacteria boom, which is also what causes the smelliness of these tops. Now, the smell can be quite bad, so do not be alarmed by it just yet. One thing you want to note here is also that the banana peel is at this point already super cloudy, which I think is just simply because too much bacteria grows in there at this point. And I think that's why no life ever occurred there. And after 10 days, as you can see, there is a tiny bit of life inside one of the tubs here. The water has slowly started clearing and you can see plenty of tiny, tiny white dots and tiny, tiny white strings, which are the microworms. The other tub at this point was still super cloudy, but I decided to leave it as the infusoria might be able to combat the amount of bacteria and actually at the end of the day, grow to a huge culture because there's plenty of food available. After around 14 to 20 days, the water should be fully clear and the water should also be full of life. Now, if this does still not happen for your culture, well, then I just recommend that you throw it out and try again because leaving it for longer just means more bacteria and the smell at the end of the day gets completely unbearable. So I do not suggest trying any further if you after 14 to 20 days still do not see any sort of life inside of your tub. So that's the pretty much straightforward and easy to handle guide on how to make infusoria. Well, now that you hopefully watched this video and maybe you came back to this after 10 days and your own infusoria has grown or you already made some and you wanna see what do you do now? Well, the main thing that you wanna do since you have your infusoria now is basically just that you A, either wanna use it or B, wanna keep culturing it so that they don't die. Because if you don't do anything to them now, Within a week, most of the life down here will be dead and this will start stinking very bad again because all of the life in here is dead. So bacteria will have renewed life to grow from. And that basically means that this will become a bacteria bomb and that does just not smell very pleasant. I've had one just standing to see how far this would go and if any new life would grow, but the smell was just so terrible that I had to throw it away at the end. So I do not recommend that by any means. I just recommend that you guys make this and do something about it. So what you wanna do as soon as you have life down here? And let me just see, let me see if we can see some of the life that should be in here. I am just gonna try to bring this up to the camera and see if we can get anything out of this. 
I would be very surprised. I don't think you guys can see this. Hopefully I'll be able to do some editing and show you some, some life in here. But there is a lot going on. And if nothing else, I'll see if I can roll some pictures and show you a couple of bits of what's going on down here. So as I said, we also have some micro worms and I have not been able to 100% surely identify what it is. But besides that, there's also some, some weird life going on down here, moving around in the water and, and whatever it is, they're about the size of a, I say, a, a grain of sand maybe. That's probably the best way to describe them. But there are a couple of them and you can really see them flying through the water when you just tap it lightly. So there is some life going on down here, which is way bigger than just Infosoria. Now, I don't really know what it is yet, so I'm gonna scoop it up just to make sure that it's not something that is eating all of my Infosoria because we don't really want that. But if I get that away, I should be able to maintain the amount of Infosoria in here. It's super easy to do. The only thing you really have to do is just grab a couple drops of milk for a tub of this size, drop it in there. As soon as you start maybe seeing the culture just decaying a little bit in the amount of them, because this will spike another bacteria growth in here and the Infosoria will have something to live off of again. It's the same very basic procedure if you want to sell these off as data cultures well grab a good bunch of these put them into a new tub with some clean water you can use clean water by then because you know for sure that you'll be putting plenty of life in there from your starter culture and then you just feed it with a bunch of milk drops and once you've done so well then the bacteria will start blooming this one was odorless yesterday it stinks again just a little bit nothing much and in a couple of days i am suspecting that this will be odorless again and this will once again have plenty of life in here so it is as i said super simple to do and hopefully you guys can take some of that with you from this video and that is pretty much all i have to say about infosoria it's a super simple process but if you like me looked on the internet a couple times then you also know that there is about a million different solutions on how you can make your own infosoria so this is just my way of doing it and as you can clearly see it works and hopefully this also helped sum up some of the many different results with just a straightforward procedure. And if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments down below. Now this is a new channel, so I would very much appreciate a subscription if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, bye bye.